Today I'm going to do a little bit different method. I don't know if I've shown this before. Um, essentially, I'm working hard bottom patches anywhere from 100 to 200 feet. Um, I'm starting a little on the deeper side. I'm closer closer to 200 right now. Um, but lately there's been absolutely no current, which depending on what you're doing, you tend to be like a little bit of current, a little bit of water movement. But what it does open things up for is um, chunking or drifting dead baits. Um, I don't have any live bait today. I'm bringing, I just brought Cup Bonita. Um, and what I've been doing, I anchored up and I've just been throwing chunks in the water. Slowly throwing chunks, they'll slowly drift down. Um, hopefully we can get some snappers to show up. So that is kind of the name of the game. Uh, I'll talk a little more through it as uh, the day goes on. We'll see what happens. But, oh, let me show you. I'm using a Saragossa 8000. I brought this out last week to try to test it out and I ended up hooking Ended up hooking a bluefin with it, which was not what I had in mind, but uh, Saragos 8000 and just a little jig head. I've got about 15 feet of 30 pound fluorocarbon, uh, a jig and a bonita chunk. And like I said, I've been, I've been here about 20 minutes throwing chunks out, so now I'm gonna throw a chunk out with a hook in it. And I want this to sink slowly and naturally. You, try, you wanna try to match the speed that the, the, the chunks you're throwing out are sinking. If it sinks like a, like a rocket straight down, um, it's not going to work. The fish, will, the fish will be able to tell the difference in it. So you want to use a jig small enough to get it there, but not get there so fast that it looks abnormal. So essentially, toss it in, and I'm just going to feed it out, and I will know when I have a bite if it either stops completely, which could be on the bottom, but that's one way to tell if it stops and the line goes slack. Typically, when a snapper grabs it, I'm targeting mutton snappers today, typically it's going to be a big thump or they're just going to grab it and take off running. And all you do is close the bail and start reeling. So it was a lot of talk. Um, but that's the name of the game. That's what we're attempting. Uh, see how it goes. That was a weird bite. I have a feeling that was a shark. That is not how I want to start the day. That was a shark. So that's what we're doing. We're chunking for snappers. So again, the only reason I'm able to do this this deep, typically you wouldn't be able to chunk this deep down here. Normally we have some type of current, um, but because there's no current is why I'm able to do this. I think what makes a good fisherman is the ability to adapt to the current conditions. Everyone always asks me, well, what size leader, what size jig? Uh, it really all depends, there's not one answer. Um, if there's more current, you know, I have to go up heavier on a jig. If the water's dirtier, I can go up heavier leader because the, the visibility is bad. If it's clean, I have to go down. Um, if there's no current, I go down a size. Um, there's not one right answer. You really just have to be able to adapt. Oh, that was my snapper. Did you see that? Because I was talking, I missed it. That line just was peeling out like crazy. You don't come back. same bite similar this almost feels more like a jack yeah that was a 
a different bike. That first one was it. That line just peeled out real fast. If this is a snapper, it's smaller. Feels more like a maybe a, a blue runner or something. Oh, smaller snapper. Whew. Not a giant, honestly. If you guys have been following long enough, you know. If I'm gonna eat a mutton, I prefer it to be a little smaller. I don't mind all of them. That one's 20 inches. They gotta be 18 to keep. Beautiful. At least I know they're here. And again, it's a small jig head. I'm a little deeper water. I'm inside uh, 200 feet. Nice, nice size chunk. Just like that. And it takes a little while to get down there. Like I said, if, if there was, I, I know I repeat myself, but you guys would be amazed. I can say something 10 times in a video and someone will ask me a question that I answered. The only reason I'm able to do this is because there's no current. The, the current is not moving, so I'm slowly drifting. And it does take a few minutes to get down there. So um, if you're impatient, this may not be the technique for you. talking to a camera what you can actually do is you can watch your clock or get a stopwatch or something and time when you get your bites say it's a minute and 45 seconds in two and a half minutes in depending how deep you are um, and uh, that way you know kind of when to start to pay attention if you have a few that are within the same window of time as long as it's been drifting like you start your drift and then time it um, then you kind of have a window of when you should be paying attention for your bite Sometimes you'll get all the way to the bottom and nothing will happen. You just reel it up, start over. I think I'm on the bottom actually. Something else I want to point out, um, technically this is a form of chumming. I think some people assume that chumming is kind of just the end all be all to fishing. There have to be fish in the area for chum to work. You can't just go in the middle of nowhere and put chum in the water and, and think fish are gonna uh, show up. Chumming doesn't like create fish. Like fish have to be in the vicinity for them to react to it. So if you pull up to a spot and you're doing this, you know, for an hour or so, there's probably not a lot of fish around. If you don't catch anything, there's not any fish around. So um, just kind of wanted to point that out. Everyone assumes that chumming is kind of the, the end all be all. And it obviously works. It works well if there's fish around, but. got to be fish for it to work. by that bite it was quick big head digs just ate it and ran hopefully stays on there and again I know and again I know YouTube land makes this stuff look like I just put a bait down every time I get a bite I've been here probably an hour and 20 minutes this is the second snapper I've hooked 
You just gotta put your time in. Sometimes they would have given up by now. I hope it's a mutton. Yeah, there he goes. Once they hit a certain point, they'll not like way easier, but you'll feel them lighten up. Once the gases start to expand. Hammerhead fall on it. That is a mutton snapper. The hammerhead following me. fish. Wow. So that is a full-size mutton snapper and that's what uh, chunking for snappers does when it works. Like I said, the snapper's got to be there. It doesn't work anywhere. There's got to be fish there for it to work, but wow. What a beautiful fish. And I got lucky. That shark was right after it. I don't know if maybe the fish was a little too big. It wasn't that big of a hammerhead, maybe six foot. Um, Wow. All right, we we're gonna try that again. I switched sides uh, on the boat. Maybe the lighting's a little better over here. I realize it's kind of dark over there. Down she goes. The in-between bits of this just slowly drifting them out. It's very boring. Um, could show you 40 minutes of me standing here peeling out line. Not what you guys want to see, I'm sure. And I'll take a clip of the bottom. I'm not, there's nothing, it looks literally just like flat bottom. Um, again, working hard bottom. The reason I know there's fish here is because I've fished it before and I've tried and uh, put the time in and you find them. They like some areas more than others. Sometimes you create bites in your head. other fish down there a lot of times just continue to drift it and they'll come back oh. <laughs> oh for two that was a better one that was like that one ate like the big one did you just see the line peels out so it's like when you get in that area when you're in that section of the column where they're eating or where they're at That is a snapper, that is a jumbo. Woo. And I don't have this drag, I don't have this drag set light by any means.
When it is good, it's good. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> you can see bringing them up so fast, they you get the air in the scales. You brain them real quick so he's not suffering. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Days it's just on. This number two big boy. You can see the air under the scale. The scales are lifted. You bring them up from the deep fast. You can actually pop the air. Barotrauma. What a beautiful fish. Unreal. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We've got plenty of fish. Plenty of fish for the week. Oh, I'm pooped. I can't believe this is my life. That is all we need. We're done out here. Hopefully I learned something. <laughs> Just can't get over it. That is chunking for snappers. I am done out here. Um, that was what you would call a good day. I know I try to keep it real in YouTube land. Some days it's bad, some days it's good. Today was a really good day. I think I've only been out here, I think I left at like 9.30, 9.15. It's, it's already 11, or only 11.30, so. I mean, it was on. I caught three really nice fish on the first spot. That's plenty enough to eat for the, the next week or so. Um, but yeah, we're done. Gonna head back, we'll get uh, one of these cleaned up and we'll be eating snapper. I know some of y'all like this information. I don't know if you can see it, hopefully. If not, I'll tell you. It's right at 15, if not a smidge over 15. It's about, about as big as I've ever caught them. I know some guys have got them 17, 18, but that may be close to my biggest ever on rod and reel. That, the, uh, the second one was just over 14 and a half. Some really, really healthy fish. Timsy, what are you doing? So I just got home, uh, making a little bit of breakfast. Well, it's two o'clock, but I'm, I'm having breakfast. Uh, got caught up down on the boat. I got in, it was like 11, 30, 12 o'clock when I got in. I think it was 12 o'clock. Anyways, a couple of things I wanted to share. I got stopped by FWC, not like uh, law enforcement uh, biologists. They actually, uh, a lot of times will sit at the marinas and they'll take samples from some of the fish. They remove it's a, like an ear bone or an ear stone, I think they call it. It's I, be, I believe it's autolith. I could be wrong, but uh, it's pretty neat. I took some video of it. Maybe I'll throw it up. Um, they use them to age the fish, and they just it, it helps them do whatever it is that they do. Help help you know set regulations and whatnot. But um, I'm sitting here making breakfast, and I hope I don't want to sound too preachy, but 
maybe if you're in a bad place, you're stuck, you're, you need some motivation. I, it's two o'clock. I went fishing this morning. I got paid to do it. And this is my backyard. And I just, it just kind of hit me that I am living my dream. And uh, you always hear about people saying, oh, the good old days. We back in the good old days. Um, I've had a lot of good old days. Right now is a really, really good old days. Like I'm, I'm doing exactly what it is I set out to do 10 years ago. Um, and I just want anyone out there that needs to hear it, it is possible. It's not going to happen overnight, but you can do it. I, like I said, I went fishing, caught enough fish for the week, um, and I'm having breakfast at 2 o'clock. I get to look at this. It's just unbelievable. And um, I'm living my version of what I think the dream is. And uh, sorry, I'm rambling. I'm just kind of thinking out loud. It's just had like a profound moment. Uh, when I was younger, I thought I wanted different things. And as you get older, I think those ideas of what you want your life to be change. And I'm really at a point where I'm starting to figure that out. Like when I was younger, I thought I wanted to be rich and famous and have all these things. And uh, it turns out I just, I don't. I want to be successful. I want to be able to take care of my family. Um, but honestly, I want to harvest our food and take care of our home. And I want to eat breakfast at two o'clock and have mutton snapper to eat tomorrow. So um, it's just hard to believe. Look at this. Hopefully that wasn't too much rambling, but uh, I just thought I wanted to share it. Maybe, maybe someone needed to hear it. I don't care what it is you're after your dream of or, or your dream or your idea of success may be different, but uh, I want you to know that you can do it. It's not going to happen overnight. It took me 10 years, um, but right now I'm living in the good old days. Gonna have some breakfast, but um, if you know me, I can't live. I can't remember if I already said it. Uh, I'm gonna let the let the mutton snappers rest overnight. I'm gonna have some bacon and eggs and some avocado, and uh, it's actually Valentine's Day, so we ha we do have dinner plans, but we'll get those uh, uh, mutton snappers flayed up uh, tomorrow, and we'll have some to eat. So I'll see you then. So this mutton snapper has been sitting overnight. <clears throat> I like letting my fish rest. It's just easier to deal with. And I think the meat tends to be a little better. So we are going to break it down. Personally, if I had a choice, I would take the smaller snappers. Smaller muttons, anyways. I prefer a mangrove over most snappers, but... Um, that's being picky. They're all they're all delicious. And if I bring something up from the deep, and I know it's got a not a good chance of going back down, I'm gonna eat it regardless. But these muttons are delicious. They're pretty much pretty much just like a red snapper. I need to sharpen my knife. So here I start at the top. I'll take that serrated down through the, the rib area. Start at the top, straight through the backbone, and then once I get down here uh, towards the tail, I jump across and over that bone and break through. I'll flip it around and work back down. Pearl. Tell me about it. Well, the same thing. Work through the backbone on the small on the bottom side. And I like a serrated. I like taking the ribs. If you've watched the channel before, you've heard me say that about a thousand times. Now time for a new serrated too. Filet. That's not what we'll be using today. Here's a little scrap tipsy. You want some? Move it or 
lose it, sister. You're in the way, Tipsy. Alright. The lays are off. Still a lot of goodies on here. Uh, today we're going to be using the racks. These are some really nice big racks. Um, but these collars or wings, throats, depending on where you're at, hold a ton of meat. But today we're going to be focusing on the rack. There you go. So like I said, there's still tons of, we use all the rest of this. I'm just not going to show that today. Um, you can break these off and just grill these or cook them however. The head's great for soup. Um, but that's what we're going to be focusing on today is these racks. Got our racks. Just did olive oil and salt and pepper. We're gonna cook these up. I'm gonna have a little snack and um, we, uh, when you have bigger ones like this, cook it up, eat it for dinner. And if you, if you don't want to, you know, um, eat it for necessarily a meal, cook them all together and then pick them. And then you can put that meat in a, a container. That's what I'm gonna do. I know, I need a new grill. This thing's disgusting. Um, I'm gonna cook them, pick the meat out, and we'll have stuff for tacos, salads, whatever it may be. But uh, these do not take long, as, as thin as they are, just a couple minutes. Like I said, these do not take long. I use that olive oil to try and prevent them from sticking. And if you get, if they get too big, you can do this with anything. You can do it with cobia, you know, mahi, any, any bigger pelagics. Um, if they get too big, you can cut them, actually cut them into sections. Take your serrated and just cut them into sections and do this. But um, that was about two minutes on that side and just a couple more and that looks like it should be good. Hey, 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 what do you think this is, a buffet? Tipsy's like, ooh, it's eye level. Back up. I don't need your help, mama. All right, so first step, let these cool down. Then we'll burn your fingers. And I've done this, I've shown you a few of you, I've shown this a few times. Um, I don't know if I've ever done bigger ones, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter. You can do it whatever size whatever size fish you got. And obviously there's still bones in there, but you pick right through it. It's um, it's funny, it's like in the US and the States, it's uncommon to use the whole fish. Everywhere else in the world, they look at you funny if you don't. But there's just so much left on there. That's all meat, it's just one little piece. Mmm. Pick the those small pieces. And throw the bones. Back to the fish. You can't have the bones, baby. I'm sorry. I don't know if she's in frame. Tipsy's sitting right here staring at me. She's like, drop something, old man. Unbelievable patience, Tipsy. But it's just so darn good. The meat, po the meat closer to the bones, amazing. So, like I said, even if you don't want to sit down and have this on your dinner plate, cook it and pick all the meat out and save it. That's what I'm gonna do. Oh, I got scales in there somehow. You can take, take your trunk, Tipsy, you're pushing your luck here, girl. You just take your chunk and break all that meat off. You can save this for tacos, throw it on top of salads. I always say, you know, we are, we're harvesting these fish to eat. We spend so much time and effort to get out there and get them and uh, enjoy them. Why not? 
enjoy every bit of it that you can. Sorry about that, the jets are doing their thing. Love the jets. There's just no way to talk over them. Here, Tetsu, I'm gonna accidentally drop one piece right over here. Okay, see right there. That is all I have. Look at that. That's half of half of one of those mutton carcasses. That's enough for you know a couple tacos. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. What an amazing day of fishing. I wish it was always that good. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something. I uh, genuinely can't thank you guys enough for coming back and continuing to watch these videos. Uh, really is a good time. We're having a great time doing it. bit on there for the canal fish. We'll see you on the next one. What are you doing? You know that's hanging by a string, right? You just feeling wild? It's so dang good, Tipsy. So dang good.